All right, thanks everybody. Nice to meet everyone. Um, so yeah, as Steve mentioned, you know, a lot of advanced CV talk out there, a lot of conversations happening in terms of how to utilize it, how to really focus on that and have it complement linear TV efforts. So a lot of what I'm doing, a lot of what our team is doing is really talking to specific legacy-focused clients and giving them reassurance of how to test into it effectively, really introducing different data sets, different providers that we work with on the programmatic side, on the managed side, and bringing that to light and driving that ultimate performance for them. Um, so with that process, you know, we're working with clients that have bought linear TV for decades. So they're, they're familiar with two second or two minute spots, you know, 60 second creative, very ingrained in terms of how they, um, you know, operate throughout that process. So it, it, there's a lot of education that goes into that. So in terms of that framework and how that really works for, let me see this button here. There we go. So setting the stage, how, do, how does that work? How do we talk to specific clients that are really interested in testing and the different parameters that go along with that? So first we have to understand the target audience, right? So we have to look at what does that historical linear performance data look at? What networks are working? What station groups are working? Understand that and really can we extend those specific properties and reach those, consume, those different users within the advanced TV landscape. Next, we look at really third or first party data segmentation. Um, a lot of what we've been focusing on is really that CRM onboarding and, and focusing on the client data to find their specific audiences across different you know, AVA partners, different streaming partners, again, programmatically and direct. Um, so there's a lot of conversation just on looking at what's worked historically and it's extending that into the advanced TV landscape, which we've seen a lot of great results with. The next is really just establishing what is that primary goal, what is that metric um, that we're looking at to really drive performance for those legacy-focused clients. Um, we want to make sure that what we're operating with in, in advanced TV is complementary, right? So we want to make sure that you know, our team, our, our linear team, our digital teams are talking to each other, which I know was just mentioned, that we're not buying the same things, we're not buying the same platforms to make sure that audience that we're reaching is, is um, extended, extended efforts for the linear schedule. And then finally, we've got to align on the core KPIs. We've got to make sure that what we're buying and what we're optimizing towards is something that they're looking to get from this test, whether that's a cost per sale metric, a conversion metric, um, just getting alignment ahead of time and making sure that we're on the same page before we really dive into that testing. And then optimizing the media um, is something, you know, we're, we're very nimble in terms of our schedules, looking at different partners that are working and giving our clients insights into that on a weekly basis. So we have to have those clear guardrails of here's the KPI, here's what we're going to do to get to that specific um, goal and here's some optimizations that we're going to get to that goal by using different you know, mechaniz mechanisms that we do have. Um, and then finally, just giving them a cohesive view of performance across linear and advanced TV efforts, getting that kind of view within one centralized report, one centralized um, data set so that they could really see that linear TV is driving X, Y, Z but including advanced TV on top of that is also driving that performance in conjunction with that. We want to have that deduplicated de performance view so they can really see that test is really working and driving incremental results. So with that, just looking at a specific case study of how we you know, went about introducing advanced TV streaming um, into a client's specific uh, campaign. So, we talked to the client, and in this case, it was an insurance warranty client. Their main goal, you know, we want to get new policy generation. We want to reach incremental audiences. What does that look like? How do we do it? And also, how do we make sure that the performance that's being driven is in line with our historical linear results? So there's a lot of conversation that goes into that, a lot of data set that's pulled, you know, through internal data, through external data, just to see 
with which specific properties that index against their audience and how we're gonna really fine tune that budget allocation for those specific properties. Um, so with that also is, again, leveraging that linear TV performance. So if we're seeing Fox News, if we're seeing CNN, any news you know, entertainment networks that perform at a strong clip on the linear side, we wanna see if we can send that presence into those specific networks and publishers um, streaming properties, which we've seen great results with just having that initial core base buy, it's sending that into those specific areas. And then layering on specific data programmatically from there. So having your, your core base of publishers and networks that perform well, extending that linear TV presence and, and really honing in on the CRM data to extend that reach and, and drive even better results and, and response rates. Um, so where did that all come to be and how did that work out for this specific client? What we saw is that their cost per sale benchmarks, you know, exceeded um, what we saw on the linear side. A lot of performance that we're driving is on the web, you know, web response versus like a call, um, click to call, or, or just a traditional toll free number, um, which a client in this case was very happy to see that because there's a lot of hard costs that go into call centers for clients. There's a lot of, you know, hard data costs that go into that and bottom line costs. With streaming, advanced TV being, you know, web kind of focus in terms of the response, we're driving that cost down even further, and also we exceeded those cost per sale goals. So a lot of learnings, a lot of conversation as a campaign, you know, progressed in terms of what worked and, you know, what data sets that we should look at moving forward and, and optimizing the campaign. A lot of, you know, questions on, listen, I've been doing this a certain way for decades in terms of our linear efforts, like, um, and I think through that process and showing them and testing and learning, they got more comfortable with the approach of using advanced TV as not only a test component, but something that's part of their, you know, evergreen media efforts. So there's a lot of good stuff to learn there. Um, and then also beyond just this case study, you know, looking at seasonality in terms of different trends and, and viewership habits. Um, certain networks that they, they look at seasonality wise, there could be you know, over frequency going on. So they, there's an area with advanced TV to really extend upon that and reach incremental new customers that way. So there's a, a lot of ways we, we slice and dice how we approach and talk to specific clients. But um, you know, it, it's something that ongoing in terms of converting those legacy specific clients. Short and sweet, um, if there's any specific questions, I know you mentioned frequency capping, which is a big one. Frequency capping. Yes. How so, are you managing, especially if you've, got mul if you've got multiple inputs coming into the same platform and it's really almost impossible to know who's buying what where so you actually can monitor it? Yeah, so with, let's say, um, like smart TV data providers that we're buying, like a Samsung or a Vizio, and we're buying other specific apps directly, like a Fox or a CNN, we are hit listing certain properties within like a smart TV buy, so we're not over-indexing against specific apps that way. Uh, we do have just strict frequency capping with our partners weekly and even daily that we hold them to to make sure there's not or mitigate the chance of having that over frequency and over exposure, which you mentioned, you know, seeing an ad on Hulu or, or whatever property um, 10 times over, like we wanna be able to mitigate those, those risks. Um, so I would say by the strict frequency capping, making sure we're knowing which partners provide which inventory, if we're buying that directly already, don't run that, we're already doing that directly on, on a specific campaign. How much, well, how are you dividing your buys? I mean, generally, how much are you using third parties for these placements as opposed to direct? Uh, I would say it's a good, good mix. I would say it's split down the middle um, in terms of you know, direct managed buys and like programmatic buys. I think what we typically do, like I mentioned before, with just testing with legacy clients is mostly with direct managed service, like networks and apps that they're used to buying on the linear side, mm -hmm. testing into that first, and then expanding from there into the more programmatic landscape. How do these platforms compare, just roughly? I don't necessarily need you to name names, but it certainly we, we clearly have some top tiers. 
like a Hulu. But then we also have an incredible array of SVOD or, or AVOD um, yeah. participants that are coming in, many of whom are, are doing the same crap that YouTube is doing, where in the middle of an experience, without any sense of a, of a commercial break coming, suddenly a, an ad, you know, your program starts in mid-sentence of right. someone speaking, and an ad pops in. There is, a, there is an enormous range of, uh, of quality throughout both of content, but also of ad serving. Can you tell us a little bit about how you're specking this out in terms of you know, where your money is going and what you're finding are the key differences in terms of, of actual performance across the, this sort right. of range that's there? So I th one thing I will say is that as an agency, we're kind of aggregating our investment across the linear and digital landscape in terms of the network. So we're kind of getting that overall investment and, and CPM down because of that, so which enables us, you know, as a performance agency to really drive that cost down, which is something we're, we're constantly looking at. How we look at performance, it's really based on historical trends, like certain clients perform better with news buckets or entertainment buckets. Let's kind of use that knowledge and test into that based on a similar client's similar KPI. Um, other clients we see, you know, AVOD partners perform better from a web perspective or even a call perspective. So it kind of varies based on who we're working with, um, kind of historical data and, and insights that we have to leverage, um, and, and really just driving that home with the client. Like, here's what we see here, laid out very transparently. This is what, why we want to test into certain platforms and, and go from there. How do you fold in at the, the manufacturers now, the LGs and the Samsungs, of course, they have their own networks. And one of the things that they can do is they really, and I think Roku as well, can let you retarget off of uh, their, their list because they have, they have yep. those accounts that they, they can then, they can then allow you, they can get then, you know, let you retarget off of emails from, uh, from their services. How, do, how does that tier fit into the rest? Where do you use them or not use them? Do they work as effectively as advertised? When and where? Yeah, so we definitely use like ACR retargeting off of smart TVs, whether that's, you know, first add on the CTV and then hit them on their secondary devices. We do see that works a lot, just kind of multi, multiple touch points along the journey within um, those, you know, Samsung's Vizios of the world. That fits in. I would say that's more of a phase two approach, where mm -hmm. again, we're kind of phase one is more of that direct kind of correlation of networks on the streaming apps, getting them interested first, getting the test results, and then expanding into those more data-focused, ACR-led, sequential messaging efforts. That's definitely a play. They perform well, but I would say it's more as we progress with the client throughout their, their journey. And finally, and I'll shut up now, uh, but what are you finding is also quite a, a massive range in quality of content? Are you seeing any shifts and, and patterns in uh, rate of response uh, or impact uh, that correspond with the quality of content? Yeah, I, I would say we definitely take a f contextual focus and see you know, the response varies based on the partner that we're working with. I think a lot of clients want to know where they're running, even though it's like a, a data-driven kind of advanced TV approach. They want to see which programming is driving their results something that we kind of task our partners to send to us, like, and, and we're very transparent in terms of you're driving XYZ return, what have you been running on? Because we want to focus on those properties, or you know, the reverse of that, what were you running on that didn't drive the best performance? Why don't we optimize into other areas? So that's a big thing that we're, we're looking at, is that, that transparency of we're running on this inventory, the results are garnering XYZ, and then we're kind of fine tuning it from there. How reliable is the reporting? I mean, we're, I'm, I was surprised to learn that even in digital out of home, which I would have thought would be much, a much more careful and precise buy, that programmatic digital out of home is actually suffering some of the same ills already that we're seeing to some degree in DTV, when certainly we always saw it in, in banner and social, of really not being able to know at all with any great transparency where things are showing up. Yeah, it varies on the partner that you're working with, how much they can you know, provide through the bid stream and what information they're willing to share with you. Um, you know, there could be as much of a top 10 inventory clearance list, or some partners are giving you the full kind of raw data set of here's where we're clearing, here's what platform we're on. So it kind of changes based on who we're, we're talking to. But that, as an agency and what our clients are 
telling us is like we want this transparency. We want to make this channel work, but we want to know also where these ads are running. Scott, thank you so much. No